it's the way you say it before the conversation is had. You call them a satanic Demonic leader. Demon. Mm -hmm. Nobody, if I was Richard, I wouldn't want to talk to you. You called me Alexander the Coppersmith. My man, I don't want to talk to you. You don't do that to Calvinists out there. You do it to charismatics, Corey. You okay. stay doing it with charismatics, but okay, with Justin on. Peters and others, you're gentle. Is there a difference between some of those folks versus the extreme charismatic? Yes, it is. So I don't think you genuinely want to have that conversation. I just think you want to be heard. If you got something that you feel like is from the Lord, shame on you for not telling people why. Well, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. I hope you all are doing well. I was involved in a conversation on last night. And in that conversation, the conversation actually was not even intended. Um, someone, JP, was doing a review of a video that I did on Richard Lorenzo. And in the video, they, the, the people on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, the broadcast, excuse me, JP and the, and the young fellow, I believe his name is Berto, uh, they were joined by Alexander Pagani. Now, so these are, these are, I think Berto, I think, I think he's, he's charismatic as well. So there are three charismatic who were reviewing a video that I did on, on, uh, Lorenzo. What's his first name? Whatever his name is, Lorenzo, whatever his name is. And the guy has made and said some things that are just so far off. And so they were giving a commentary. And so when, 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 um, Pagani joined in, then I just put a comment in. I just happened to be here working, uh, looking at some stuff, trying to catch up on some homework and do some other things. And so he asked, well, did I want to come on? I said, you know what? I got a few minutes. Actually for me, my, my few minutes, my 10 minutes end up being about an hour. I mean, it ended up being about an hour because the conversation was good because I, I wanted to push something out there and I think I did. And so what you're going to hear are just snippets and pieces of the conversation. The conversation I think was, or the, the video was probably about two and a half hours. And I wasn't on it for the whole time for probably about, I don't know, about, a, about an hour. Uh, I thought it was a good conversation. As a matter of fact, this is what I'm saying we need to do, but more so I don't, I don't, I think this just catches it. And I think th this is the kind of conversation that if you actually pin someone down and ask them to explain certain things, there are going to necessarily be the follow-up question and the follow-up question and so forth. And we can kind of see, because if we can't have a meeting of the minds and we can't walk together, we can't understand because it could be, Hey, I am absolutely wrong. It could be, they are absolutely wrong. But if we're over here and one part is over there and we're just talking past each other, nothing's going to happen. And so it becomes more tribal. I'm not interested in the tribal conversation. Now I don't have a problem with talking to and teaching and so forth with folks who are similar to what I believe. Cause ultimately in the end, that's pretty much going to be most of the folks that you that you that you are going to interact with, but I'm I love talking with people who have a different opinion. That's all I've ever done. That's how I got to be where I was, just having the the willingness to engage. And so uh, the conversation went. I I thought uh, it there was a little bit of intensity to it, and a little bit of emotion, but I think it was fine. I, I don't think the, there was anything wrong with what was happening. And then the young brother. Um, uh, Abednego, my and I think I may have seen him. Abednego, are you are you in the chat? I think I've seen Abednego, and if he's the same one that I that I saw on uh, online, uh, I think he used to be a basketball player. Uh, if 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 I'm correct, let me know. If he used to be a basketball player, let me, let me know if that if that's you, Abednego. I think so. If not, there's a brother that looks just like you. There's a brother that looks just like you. Uh, and by the way, if that is you, yeah, I want to see you on the basketball court. I think I can. I think I can take you. I think I can take you. Uh, but we'll see. That might just be, be me talking. But uh, yeah, you can't you, you you can't handle me. I just want to let you know that, young fellow. But the conversation was good. Uh, he joined in, and so it was one, two, three. I think it was five. Yeah, if I count right, let's see. Abednego, the other brother, uh, Emmanuel, that joined, and blah, blah. yeah, so five five charismatics, which is fine. By the way, that's how I like it. I like it when it's three against one, or two against one, or five against one. Hey, what well, you know what? Remember. It was me and 42 Muslims. I think that if you act now, I could be wrong, but I think that if you actually have truth or you believe that what you have is the truth and you can back it up, I don't think it, I don't think the numbers matter. Not to say that that these are the enemy, because I'm not saying that these that these guys were the enemy. I think our doctrines differ, um, 
But I just want to see who's willing to have the conversation because people that aren't willing to have the conversation, there's typically a reason why they're not willing to have the conversation. And I don't, I don't mean just, you know, in terms of having a spectacle, I'm not, a, I'm not after a spectacle. I'm not after some, you know, some show when someone comes on, be it in the past Pagani or be it in the past, uh, Marcus Rogers or whomever, the guy that called me a wolf. I don't want a show. I don't want a spectacle. The last guy that came on and made it about a spectacle and so forth, I kicked him off when he started, started just tossing out racist stuff. You got, you got to go. And that's not what I'm looking for. Again, I, I feel like I'm old enough to where I've passed that point in my life. So anyway, having this conversation, I thought, I thought it was pretty fruitful. So I kept going and did not get to my homework. Doggone it. I wanted to get to this homework last night, but I didn't. So I'm one day behind, but I want to start off with the conversation. The whole conversation was centered around what I said, and they were harsh words without question about Richard Lorenzo Jr. To go as far as saying, you know, Richard Lorenzo is a Satan worshiper, you know, um, I would rather him say, you know, this is this is heresy or, or maybe unorthodox and, and, and it might be erroneous, but um, Richard Lorenzo pretty much is, I, I don't understand how Satan is casting out Satan. Richard be out here in these streets, man, casting out demons and preaching the gospel and folks be getting saved and baptized. You know, I might not run him with his camp and, you know, um, but Jesus said, whoever's not against me is actually for me. But well, So now when you say that, and all, everything that he said is, is correct, but there, there needs to be some sort of caveat added to that. For example, if we read Acts chapter 8, and then we go up to the point to where Simon asks for or tries to buy the Holy Spirit, it looks like Simon is out there in these streets. It looks like Simon has a true conversion. It seems like it looks like Simon is real. And what I don't want people to lose sight of is the enemy is good at what he does. You cannot be charismatic and ignore the devil. And what they talk about a lot as far as casting him out and so forth. And, and I rebuke you, Satan, and get behind me, Satan, and so forth, and step on the devil's head, all that kind of stuff. Well, I think they need to realize, people need to realize that 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 Satan is not some 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 big target, meaning he looks like the devil. He acts like the devil and you can see him and see there he is. That's not how he moves. How do I know? Well, let's look at his MO. Let's look at how Satan has moved. Go to the garden. Do you think that Eve thought that, yeah, this guy is going, I don't think that when he slithered up to her, however he came up to her, that Eve was, this guy looks like trouble. No, she was listening to him. She was taking his word. And so Satan is slick. We have it in our minds that I can identify Satan and I can, I can, I can bash him. I can cast. Him. There's not, there's nobody in the Bible that ever bound Satan except for the Lord or the power of the Lord. Nobody. So you and I can't do it. Remember, we're talking about a creatures that are higher than us, that are more powerful than us, not us. You can't go from one place to the next place without getting on in your feet or using your feet or walking or driving or running, what have you. These are more powerful beings. Now, thankfully, we have angels and more to the point we have the Holy Spirit. So I want people to be understand that we do not uh, be that we don't, we're not fooled by the wiles of the devil. We need to understand his schemes and how he works. But principally, we're told not to fight him, but just to resist him and draw closer to God. So in the conversation, one of the things that was brought up was that people are being saved. Well, somebody got saved or someone preached the gospel and said, well, well, one, Paul is clear. There are those that preach the gospel for the right reason, the wrong reasons. What they're doing doesn't necessarily tell us about their heart. So what I'm bringing up is that, well, it looks like people are getting saved. Two things that made me want to come on. The mention that uh, Richard Lorenzo or whomever else, because this is not just said about him. I don't want to use him as the example, but other people, they said, this is about other people that People are getting saved. They're preaching Jesus and people are getting saved. And he seems like he has a good heart. And so my point was, my counter was a couple of things. One, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. And he's speaking about people who seem to be saved, who are casting out demons in his name and doing all these many miracles in his name. But Jesus indicated, I never knew you. Meaning that, guess what? A person can be useful and beneficial to the kingdom even though they're not part of the kingdom. 
people have been saved listening to people who are not Christian. There are those who were literally saved by listening to, after listening to Jim Jones, after listening to other heretics, uh, false teachers, dangerous people. It's happened. Why? Because the power is not in the gospel preacher. The power is in the gospel, as Paul says. And so in this case, touting who is saved or who got saved, one, is if we know who got saved, because we don't know who saved to begin with. That's just not, a, I don't think that's a wise thing to do when trying to defend if this person is actually of Christ. Jesus tells us that there are those, there are many who say, Lord, Lord. And then they'll say, I've done this in your name. I've cast out demons. I've, prop I've given revelation. Doesn't matter. So we've got to stop with what we think looks like salvation. One, we don't know if they got saved, number one. Number two, even if they did, the credit doesn't go to them. It goes to Christ. Because the and, and it's a common thing to speak about somebody else's heart, right? Now, before we go to, we're having this conversation, now we're also start talking about someone's heart. Paul also says that some people preach Christ for the right reasons and the wrong reasons. Some people preach it out of envy and strife, ultimately for their own gain. And what does Paul say? Nevertheless, at least Christ be preached. Why? Because if the truth comes out of a false teacher's mouth, it's still truth. It still is. The, those are the words that God used to cut someone's heart. Now, now, how sad would it be for Bob to give the gospel to Mary? Mary places her faith in Christ and Bob goes to hell. And we'll see people like that in it. Well, we won't, hopefully, because we won't be there. But we'll see people like that. There'll be people like that in hell. And there'll be people like that in heaven who owes, uh, I don't want to say debt of gratitude, but uh, the words that, that, they, that they heard they heard that from someone that's a false teacher. There are people that have placed their faith in Christ at Joel Osteen's church or at a T.D. Jake's church or anywhere else. It, it it happens because the power of the gospel transcends the individual. Notice the Bible says that these words, all scriptures are inspired. God breathed. Didn't say the individuals because if that were the case, then the apostles and whomever else would be perfect. And we know that's not the case. And so now we're talking about the person's heart. Is this person who we think he's a good guy? This person, uh, I think we're being too harsh on pastor so and so, preacher so and so, this person so and so, because he seems to have a good heart, or I know he has a good heart, right? But every last one in this, in in this, on, on the screen, and everyone in the in the chats, and everyone that you know has come across somebody that you thought you knew their heart. I, I could have swore he was this or she was that. So we guys, let's stop doing that. Because what 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 is demonic oftentimes is veiled. It doesn't look like it is. I mean, the devil, right? So how many of you ladies, how many of you guys can just think back? Yeah, look at him. He's just, girl, he's the right one. And he's sweet too and all those things. And look at him. He's, he's nice and he's smart and he's strong and he's bald on top of that, loves the Lord. So yeah, you but, but you can't see his heart. Matter of fact, what you see clouds what you should be seeing. You don't see what everyone else said. Have you ever noticed how many times has someone else saw what you didn't see? And for them, it was evident. It was clear, but you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it because you wanted so much for him to be the one. You wanted so much for her to be the one. You wanted so much for that job to be the right job. You wanted so much for that guy that's selling you, I don't know, that vacuum cleaner, that car. That, yeah, this guy, he's a nice guy and so forth. People are taken by other people all the time. What's the old saying? There's a sucker born every minute. And oftentimes they're Christians because we go by everything. Remember, the Bible says that there are people out there that are tossed back and forth by every wind of doctrine. There are folks who just fall for so many things. And that's what the devil plays on. He's not hard to spot from a distance, but up close, it, sometimes it's difficult, which is why you need it. You need a spotter. You need a wingman. You need somebody looking out for you saying, hey, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because sometimes we make decisions based off our heart. And so we shouldn't, we shouldn't try to judge the situation based on the person who's saying it based on their heart. Well, they meant well. They seem to mean well. The devil's not coming at you. Hey, listen, I'm coming to destroy you. No. Again, he comes, he disguises himself as what? An angel of light. So it looks like his heart is good. It looks like what he says is good. Which, 
And I like I like what C.C. Williams says. That Ted, Ted Bundy was charming. Charming is all good out. Hey, D. Hey, why don't you come on inside? I got some. I got you want to watch some TV. You want to just hang out a little bit. Hey, let's drink a little bit. Next thing you know, hey, man, why are you sawing off my arm and chewing on it, Mr. Jeffrey? Please, Mr. Dahmer, would you stop that? Yeah, these guys, they prey on you because they seem to be a certain way. Again, Jim Jones, you pick the you pick the cult leader. They're 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 charismatic, not in the spiritual sense, in a religious sense, but charismatic in the sense that they have a charming personality, a, as they say, a magnetic personality. They say the right words. And so, yeah, next thing you know, you're talking to the guy, you close up. Next thing you know, you, you're cut up in pieces in somebody's freezer, which is why the Bible is not asking you to judge their heart. You judge what they do and what they say. And the reason why I would use those, those harsh terms, and I don't have a problem with, with retracting them if I see something different. I really don't. I don't have a problem with saying it and pulling my, you know what, on second thought or maybe. Don't have a problem with that at all. Now here, and, the, and now the conversation is going to pick up a little bit, a little bit of intensity, a little bit, a little bit of... I don't say attitude, but emotion, which is fine, which is fine. I don't think that anybody was was bothered by by the emotion. But the issue was some of the words that I say, some of the words that I use. Now, here's what's funny, especially you guys that are watching, especially if you guys have watched and been watching for the last, I don't know, the last couple of weeks, the last month, the last two months, the last three months, really the last three years. I've only been on YouTube three years and you really can't win. You're too nice to these people, Corey. You're too harsh to these people, Corey. You are, Corey, you are coddling wolves. Corey, you're, you're, you're running them away. You can't win. You can't win. And so I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be skillful. Psalms tells us that, that you ought to have some integrity and be skillful. And so there are some times where, you know what, you kind of address or prize situation and then you move in that regard. Sometimes how you handle somebody is different, but sometimes it just calls for you to call things out. Remember, and we'll go over this in just a little bit, but I want you to think about these words. These are, we're going to put in the screen just a little bit, but these words that are used in the Bible, words like contend, words like undermine, words like expose, refute, silence, silence them, meaning rebuke, fight, beware. What about Jesus or John calling people brood of vipers? What? So there are times, not all the time, there are times where you actually do need to use harsh words because sometimes I'm not concerned about helping out the, the murderer. I'm more concerned with helping out the potential murder victims and society writ large. But here's the question. What does demonic look like? Because if you're going to tell me you know what it looks like, what it not not what it sounds like on scripture or what it see, we see that. But what it looks like is sl subtle. It's it's crafty. It looks good. She sounded good. He said the right things. They promised me this. So yeah, it it it's alluring. That's who he is. We got to stop acting like he is upfront and overt. No, he looks like he's got a good heart. Yeah, but so now that's the question. That's the question. Um, obviously, we if something is demonic, we call it out. So maybe we just got to get better at at identifying what's demonic. Now, I'll, I'm an, I'm in agreement that oftentimes, or a lot of times, we call something that's demonic that's not demonic, right? Some someone uh, did something wrong and that's demonic. Well, no, that's just you know that's just. Uh, what is demonic is something that is it is used and pushed and influenced by the enemy some sort of way he has a hand in or part in it even if it's from a believer let's say some attitude some thought uh some understanding some teaching in the last days we're going to have these people that are going to introduce these these heresies these doctrines of demons folks will fall away from the faith now think about this for a second ladies and gentlemen matter of fact I'll put it up later. Somebody remind me to bring bring this up. First Timothy four one. R remind me to bring this up. But notice when Pete when pa Paul <laughs> when Paul says First Timothy four one. I said First Peter four First Timothy four one that there in the last days there will be people that were going to fall away from the faith, not from having faith, but from the faith. And what's going to be the cause of it? What's going to be the result of it? These um, these doctrines of demons. These these doctrines 
these teachings, notice, because he's talking about the faith and these doctrines. So what's going to be the what's going to be the uh, uh, the reason for people falling away? Bad doctrine, bad teaching. So guys, so one of you might already remind me to go back to that. I don't feel like typing anything. I got all this other stuff put in here. So that's something we need to be, be careful of about the fact that if it's demonic, it's demonic. And let's recognize how do you call, how do you how do you recognize what something is demonic because oftentimes how he shows up is it looks beautiful looks good to me but, but corey it's the way you say it before the conversation is had you call them a satanic demonic leader. demon no mm -hmm. if i was richard i wouldn't want to talk to you you what do you think now i'll let y'all respond I, I'll, I'm, I'll pull up you guys' response but Someone's on a, on a different side of the uh, of the country, or heck, sometimes a different part of the city. They might be here in Dallas, because Lord knows we do have our share of bad teachers here in the in the Metroplex and in Texas, but really here in America because there's freedom. And so, is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? How is it if you if you say this person is a heretic, this person this person's a wolf, this person's demonic, this person's evil, this person's wicked? Is that, here's the question I'm asking you guys, is that a good strategy? Is that wise to bring them in? Is that wise to call that person a wolf, a charlatan, a heretic, the devil, what have you? Is that a wise approach to try to bring him in? You called me Alexander the Coppers with my man. I don't want to talk to you. Get the heck out of here with that. I want to talk to you, man. Like mm -hmm. that's how you open up dialogue. Corey, and I'm saying this with all love, you need to learn to be a bridge builder. You want to have those conversations. I've had, and if you you know how I ended up in JP's channel and other channels, you go, why don't they talk to me? Because they ask nicely. You don't ask. So let me ask you guys a question. So I'm asking you that question. What do you think? Is that is that okay to do it that way? Well, it is. It's it's unwise if you're necessarily trying to get a conversation with that person. If that's your if that's your ultimate goal or your only goal or your main goal, then yeah, cozy up to them and soothe them with salve, rub on them. But if that's not your goal, the goal is not for who I would think or who you would think is the wolf. The goal is, is for protection of the flock. And so the yell, hey, there's a cute, warm, cuddly furry animal who looks like a German shepherd. I think he wants, I think he wants to cuddle. He might not be. He's got larger teeth and his eyes are a different color. And he seems to be salivating at the sheep. But don't worry about it. No, there's a wolf. And so what do sheep dogs do at the sight of a wolf? They go to barking. They don't go, hey, you, let's go hunting. No, that's not how that works, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, what was interesting, I did see a video where a guy had taken a wolf and rehabilitated the wolf and made the wolf part of the part of the uh, uh, the, the, the little posse or whatever, the pack with the dogs. And so this, this, this wolf is actually helping to protect the sheep and so forth. But one day, I, I just worry that if this, this so-called rehabilitated wolf ends up just, I don't know, licking one of the sheep and tasting the sheep he he might you know what i think I, you know what that tastes pretty good because that's his that's his nature and so the goal is not for the benefit of that person the goal is to get rid of that like paul in first corinthians 5 paul says to get rid of that chump he didn't call him a chump but get rid of that bum get rid of that jerk throw his behind out turn him over turn him over to the devil in hope, in hopes that he would come back. Now, after that's done, sir, ma'am, madam, it could be that you're not a wolf truly, but you're playing the part of the wolf. And so maybe you don't know. So can that person be redeemed? Because again, as I said before, even that person, their soul matters. And so we'll look to see if that person can, can, can be helped. If that person wants to come along and play nicely, but that's not the first concern. That's not, name the emergency uh, personnel, police officers or uh, firefighters or ambulance or whomever 
that their first response is to the people that are that aren't being attacked. No, they want to end the threat, stop what's what's happening, and then fix the situation as best as possible, and then whatever caused it, we'll address that later. Either through maybe may, maybe maybe the perpetrator needs to be shot and put down, or maybe he's arrested and put in jail, and then he's rehabilitated that way and brought back out. But what is all that for? To protect society, or in our case, to protect the body, right? So sometimes there is the need to just be harsh with the words, and then if someone says, I think your words were harsh, well, now guess what it does? It opens up a dialogue, right? Now, I want I want to point out the irony of, of, of what he's saying here. And I've, I've been saying this for a long time, but I want I want you guys to point out the irony. Acts nicely, my man. Like, if I was rich, I saw that video. Yo, I'm a satanic. Like, whoa. Rather than, Richard, if you're watching me, I really need to have this conversation with you. I, I'm struggling with, no, you went right into accusation. Mm -hmm. No one's going to have that conversation with you, Corey. Not, not no two grown man, not no tough skin. No, man, like that, that's, that's not even the biblical way to do that. that what do y'all think? Nobody's going to have this conversation with you. Well, and I gave an example to say, um, not so fast, my friend. The, the, the right way would have been like, you know, Richard, if you're watching this video, and then those of you that are Richard followers, send this to him, tag him on it. I really need to understand. I'm trying to give you the, like, then I can see if he don't want to do that, then you can make this, but my man, you called them like, you said satanic. Even I was like, oh, like, oh, wow. You know, and then. What if the people in the charismatic community did that? Called out this fool. Now, I'll, I'll say this, and I'm going to have to give him a call sometime this week uh, to the to my very tall basketball playing brother, uh, Abednego, who is not as good on the basketball court as me. I want to give him a holler because what he does, he does call this stuff out. He calls that stuff out and it ought to be more. What if everyone else who's in the, who is charismatic or Pentecostal also did that? And Joshua, I'm coming to you because you caught on already. Cool. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't be mistaken. I'm not doing yeah. it to get his attention. Yeah. I'm doing it to warn the people. Right. What is the likelihood that Richard Lorenzo or anyone else is going to reach back? Not, 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 not likely. Some do. Some do. Marcus yeah. Rogers, case in point. Some do. Right. So, I said what I said about Marcus Rogers. I said before, I, I don't know what I called him, a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and it was all, and I meant all those things. But then, so what, what happened? Marcus Rogers reached out. And so let's, let's see where this goes. It may not go anywhere. But Joshua brought up a point also. I didn't say it last night. I said, okay, I'll, I'll leave this alone for, for the moment. But Joshua brought up a point. He says, hold on. Pagani complimented you on asking him in a Christ like way. Yeah. And that was after me calling him out. So it does work. But it's not the goal. It ain't the, well, you hold on, wait, wait, whoa, 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 young fella. No, I wouldn't be hilarious. I'm serious about my basketball game. I did, listen, I don't know if you realize this. I don't know if you realize this, young fella, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. Y yeah, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, but sometimes you call folks out and they do respond. They, 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 or, 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 and as I said before, y'all, you you would ha you have no idea how many people have heard something that others have said about them, and they go back and they readjust. They don't they won't admit it, but maybe they readjust their videos or take a video down or or you know what? Let me let me tweak that. Let me change this. Because matter of fact, and I don't know if if God will probably see this later, but here's here's a prime example. Here is a prime example. About three years ago, and for the longest, we've heard people talk about Christians having a demon or being demon-possessed. It's only really been in the last two years or so where people started using the phrase demonized. Now, they use that to kind of differentiate between if there is a difference between the two. Now, ultimately, by the way, in the Greek, there is no difference. But why is that? that that's a compensation that people have made because, okay, it's fine. It can't be that, so maybe it's demonization. And so we've watched this happen. So the call outs and the warnings and so forth. Remember, Jesus says that there are false prophets and false teachers. Peter says that Paul says that. And so how do you how do you how do you warn somebody about a false prophet or false teacher if you don't call them a false prophet and false teacher and do so by name? Right. 
So in this case, what he's doing and all right. the other videos, I didn't pull up all, all the clips that I could. Right, right, right. I don't follow but him, so I, ha I haven't seen any of his videos. Okay, so next question. It, I would much rather call him demonic than, than let's say, like, 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 let's say if you're on stage and you, right. I'm so, gonna back up for a second. I'm back up because I, I, I think I'm getting ready. I think I'm getting ready to make a good point. Have you ever felt like you made a good point and you want to just kind of set the stage? <laughs> that's what I, that's what I think I'm doing. I think I'm about to set the stage. So I think I'm about to make a good point. I think I'm about to make a good point. But before I do, before I do, let's do what we, what I think we do best and what we should do. Let's go to the scriptures. Jude says, let's just, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write a letter, a warm, fuzzy letter to say how awesome it is for us all to be Christians. Man, it's so wonderful, so awesome. Aren't you glad that I'm saved and you're saved? I'm a Christian, you're a Christian. Wouldn't you like to be a Christian too? Some of you older folks know where that comes from. So, that's why I'm writing you. Jude says, I, Jude says, all I want to do is talk to you about our common salvation. No, Jude says, Jude says, uh, someone says, Matter, hold on, wait, wait one second, wait one second. It's a good question. CU says, where is it? There. CU says, can you show me a scripture where it says it's okay to call out everybody you disagree with as a false teacher? A couple of things, CU. One, I don't call out everybody that I disagree as a false teacher. And, oh, by the way, those that are actually false teachers, I don't call all of them out. Too time consuming. And sometimes it's just not it's not it's not the point. The point is to get a message out. Now, again, on this channel, some of the folks on the other channel realize that there's a bigger channel. There are you all realize there are thirteen hundred. I didn't realize this. Chess Champ. Chess Champ has been with me, I think, probably the longest. I think I think I think um, thirteen hundred videos. I did. I did not realize it was that many videos. That's a lot of videos. Doggone it. 1,300 videos, 85 to 90 percent of those videos are teaching. So it's not about calling them out, but should we call them out? Well, if a person, my contention, if you don't call them out, then you're not reading your Bible. You are not being, you are not being um, a believer. I mean, you're not being a, you're not being legitimate. You're not, you're not being a, you're not devoting yourself to the scriptures and following what it says. So what does scripture say? The reason why Jude wrote, he says, I wrote you earnestly. Uh, I felt it necessary to write to you, appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith. Well, how do you do that? How do you contend earnestly for the faith? You you, you have to call it out. I'm going to say something, and, and again, this is this is going to be, ladies and gentlemen, y'all forgive me. I might I might I might, I might lose a, a large chunk of subscribers and viewers on tomorrow, but I think it's going to be worth it. I, I think a cleansing is um, <laughs> I think a cleansing is needed. A cleansing is needed. We'll see. We will see because it ain't just one category, one camp of um, the body. Oh no, I've got to talk to the people that feel as though they're in the camp of sound doctrine. By the way, everyone feels like they're in, everyone feels like they have sound doctrine. The issue is, are you willing to fight for that? Are you willing to do what Paul says? And Paul, Jude says, contend for the faith. That, by the way, that's not a that's not a sit back on your couch, keep your feet up kind of kind of word. Contend means that that is a forward moving um, understanding. That is almost taking an aggressive stance. Not a mean stance, but an aggressive stance. I'm going after. It's a proactive word. Amen. And so if you're not contending for the faith, what are you doing? I, it's like some somebody is struggling to cross a busy intersection. You're over there waiting. You wouldn't, you wouldn't actually go and help that person. Well, helping that sometimes necessarily entails that you have to say some things that might be a little bit difficult for that person to swallow. Yeah, that person's got a. They've got a. They've got something on on their on their on their ear. They don't see it. They got something in their teeth. You don't say anything. In this case, what he's doing and all right. the other videos. I didn't pull up all, all the clips that I could. Right, right, right. I don't but follow him, so I ha I haven't seen any of his videos. Okay, so next question. It, now, before I go there, I don't know why. I don't. I have no idea why I pushed that, but I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting old. Let me go to what he says. He says, "Contend for the faith." But look at what else he says. Now, notice the, the words that are used here. Contend. That's, that's a, that's a, how many Christians are contending? Well, not enough. Now you, all these things you should do lovingly with the hope and expectation that the person that, that you're contending against would turn around. 
But then what about this word? What about, what about this? Look what it says here. Uh, what I am doing, I will continue to do. That's Paul making this statement in order to do what? To undermine the claim of those who would claim that we, that in their boast admission, that they work on the same terms as we do. Y'all do realize everybody that calls himself a Christian isn't a Christian. Everyone that says so isn't going to be in heaven. There are those that look like it, but they're against us. How many of you, I just got to ask this question because I, 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 I'm i pretty sure if I took a poll, there are 600 plus of you guys in the chat right now. If I took a poll and you all actually responded, I think this might be um, 600 something to nothing. I think everyone would say, yep, me. How many of you have ever been betrayed or backstabbed by someone that was close to you? I'm just, how, how many of you all have ever been betrayed or backstabbed by someone who you thought was on the same team as you? If you, listen, if you, if, if you've made it to kindergarten, you've had that because the first place is going to happen to you is kindergarten, preschool, first grade, somebody um, is, go, is going to go against you. Somebody, uh, the first time it happened to me, I'll never forget. It was Angela, Michelle and, and Danny and Gary. Yeah. Angela, Michelle, Gary, and Danny. And so one day I was, M Michelle was my girlfriend. This was, this was, this was, this was kindergarten. Michelle was my girlfriend, but she was out. She missed, she missed class that day. And so Angela was over there. And so I, I put my arm around Angela and we sat beside each other during story time. And then, no, I'm, I said, Gary, Michael, the jerk was my best friend and Danny was cool with us, but Michael stabbed me in the back because Michelle came in late. She came in late and she told Angela all about me and, and, and Angela. And so I got one of these, those, Y'all got one, you got one of those in kindergarten because of, because of, because of Michael at, at two Brute, everybody has been backstabbed by a friend, by someone that was close to you. And that guy needed to be reminded. Everyone needs to say, Hey, look out for that guy. That guy is not on our team. He's a backstabber. He is, he is cunning. He's against you. We've all had that happen. And so Paul is saying, I want you to understand something that it is my mission to undermine the claim of those who claim or who would like to claim that in their boast admission, they work on the same terms as we. Nope, we're on the same teams. Nope, we're not. We're not. Matter of fact, I'm going to walk backwards just so I can keep my eyes on you. We've got those kind of people. And so what Paul is doing, speaking for as far as the, uh, the scriptures are concerned, we got folks that aren't on our team. Just because they said Jesus, Jesus, Jesus does not mean, does not mean. Remember, what does Satan do? He is going to take the word of God and try to distort it. But he preached about the word of God. Yeah, but look where it's leading you to. So, yeah, now I want I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to this. Um, this part, I, I, just, <laughs> I didn't say, I, 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 I'm glad I didn't say it as harshly as I wanted to say it. Um, because, I'm again, I'm not trying to start a fight, but I am trying to be clear about my point. It. I would much rather call him demonic than than let's say like 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 let's say if you're on stage and you say and you call, and, and someone said they have a demon. Right. I've got better cause to call what he's doing demonic than let's Sounds say like someone fun. on stage. And so, did you hear what I said? I said to him because the issue was calling him demonic. Well, I've got better cause to call this guy Richard Lorenzo demonic or demon than people that are casting out demons do to call strangers that they know that they don't know. So they have a demon. You're saying this guy has a demon, that guy has a demon, that guy has a demon, that guy has a demon. You have no idea. But I've got better cause to call that person a demon or demonic because of what they're saying, what they're doing. And I'm more interested in the scriptures. And if a person is violating that, what do you call someone or somebody that goes against the scriptures? Is that demonic? And I mean intentionally. I don't, I don't mean they make them. I mean intentionally for the sake of gain. Now, this is a brother. Now, I, I didn't know about all the stuff that JP was saying about the guy playing some videos. The guy is telling that you need to be paying or giving tithes or what have you. Give, so he's doing it for sort of gain. Because if you start checking off boxes of what makes a person demonic or a false teacher, or what have you, well, he checks all the boxes twice. He checks all the boxes twice, and so we shouldn't be hesitant. If you see it, then, then, then call it. 
the old, you know, the 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 the, the sermon or the sermon, the words from nine nine eleven, see something, say something. There's a there's a fire burning in the corner of the building, and you don't want to say anything, you just walk away. No, you gotta you got you see something, say something, and say that that's a demon. You see what I'm saying? Because I can see it. Right. I can see it and hear it. So I'm saying it what it is. Can and, I ask you and, a question, Corey? Go ahead. Would this you, good comment. Uh, First of all, Corey, thank you for honestly answering. And I know your time is precious, but really appreciate it. I'm enjoying that we're having more dialogue in front of the public. So now I wanted to bring it up because I don't want y'all to think that, that the conversation was was contentious or bitter. It was, you know, a little bit of emotion, whatever. But this is what we said. And I'm gonna tell you though, there's one bad thing about this conversation. I see I see JP in the in the in the um in the chats. Uh, there's one bad thing about this whole conversation. One bad thing, and I don't know if we're ever going to fix this. I wish we would, but I'll get to it in a second. Oh, let me let me push back. But you don't do that to Justin Peters. You don't do that to Calvinists out there. You do it to Charismatics, Corey. You okay. stay doing it with Charismatics, but okay, with Justin on. Peters and others, you're gentle. Okay, you're no, no, very no, gentle no. with them. No. Yes, nope. you are. Yes, you I are. Called out, we, I called out. I called out. And matter of fact, why? And then you Tuesday, delete it. You you. you do this part does I, uh, okay. This is where he, he he makes a statement that I delete these these videos. Let me just show y'all something. Do y'all remember I told you I said I deleted about I don't know three four hundred videos. I didn't delete the videos. You, you just put them in. You just make them private and unlisted. Can can I show you guys the videos? Because he says that I'm and I'm not I'm not getting on him, but I, but I, I want to make a point for you all to show that I'm not trying to build a catalog against charismatics and so forth. Um, but he says, I'm deleting the videos that, that I criticize the, the reform community or the Calvinists or whomever else. Now, I'm not reformed Calvinist, but I don't delete. I, there are some videos about them that I have taken down. But I want you all to see. Just look at the videos that, that are private or unlisted. Let me just go ahead and put this on the screen. Where is it at? Uh, there it is. So these are the ones that are that are private and unlisted. And I want you to notice how many charismatic themes or charismatic faces are on here. Uh, there's one, there's two, there's three, uh, there's four. Th listen, there's a whole bunch of demon slayers and cow, I'm the cowboys, demon slayers and charismatics on here. Okay. So I'm taking down videos. <laughs> I saw that take, I'm taking down videos of people who are mostly charismatic. So I'm not after, I'm not trying to just bash charismatic and 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 people in the deliverance ministry. I'm not trying. I'm. It's not my. Now this is. I can keep going. Uh, there's 257 videos on this side on the live side and probably another 100 or 200 on the uploaded side. But the point is, I'm not interested in just going after one particular community. What I want to do more than anything else is to go over the scriptures and how we ought to read the scriptures. That's the goal. My my whole goal is reading the Bible the right way. Because if we can read it the right way, well, then we can get to the heart of the matter. Amen. You do a video and then you delete it on them. I'm no, just calling it for what? No, with us, Herod, you go hard. With them, you give them the benefit of the doubt and don't sit here and say we do it because we all see it. That's okay. partiality, my friend. No, but it's I'm not, not calling you out on that. Okay. But, uh, but here, it is here, what it is. Here, I don't here. see that same smoke. You give it to them. You give it to us all the time. You just okay. we, witch doc we witch doctors, all of that stuff. Here's but with the them, you real tiptoe. You, that's just what it is, man. That's okay. what it is. Is there a difference between some of those folks versus the extreme charismatic? Yes, it is. Now, that's my point. He, I get it. I don't call out Justin Peters as harshly as I would um, Jamal Bryant. Why would I? Why, why would I? And my and to my point was, even charismatics don't call out the Justin Peters like they would some of the some of the the crazy charismatic stuff that we see. When you go on, I don't know TikTok or or Twix, that's Twitter and X, or Facebook or anywhere else or on YouTube, and you just see just outlandish things by that's reported by Christians and even non Christians. I can promise you, nine times out of ten, it's going to be somebody charismatic, just doing things and disregarding the scriptures. So whatever you might have issue with, let's say a James White or Justin Peters or whomever else, Bodie Bauckham, they're at least going through scriptures. I disagree with your scriptural take, but not how you're acting, how you're behaving with those 
um, misinterpreted scriptures. I'm not going out there doing a cartwheel, doing something that is unbecoming because we are to be holy, even with our behavior, as Peter says. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a, there is a, is it just, maybe it's just me, but I think it's a huge difference between Justin Peters and MacArthur and uh, Vody Bacham and James White and your, your friendly garden variety Calvinist or Baptist or whomever else versus some of the more outlandish charismatics. And that, that is the issue. And so it's, it's, it's the same thing when they had the conversation in the, in the round table, when it was Michael Brown and Sam Storms and Justin Peters and uh, Jim Osmond, the conversation was about the more outlandish stuff and even the charismatic in the group were bringing these things up. And what were they doing? They were defending one, their heart, defending uh, Mike Bickle's heart. And they were saying, well, his actions, eh, we don't agree with those actions. But people got saved, which we don't know for sure. And then the only issue that was brought up about someone on the non-charismatic side was a dead guy a few hundred years ago, which was just which was Martin Luther. And so if he said that, yeah, I don't have a problem with, with saying anything bad or, or about Martin Luther. I never met him. He didn't die on the cross for me. But the point is, I think it's pretty clear. I think it's pretty clear uh, in terms of actions and behavior, outlandishness. I, It's always been that way, ladies and gentlemen. It has always been that way. And so I, I just didn't think that was a, that, did, that didn't really move the needle. I don't think to say that you don't go after them because I'm, about do now, let me ask you guys a question. Which doctrinal issue that I do I do I particularly bring up the most on this channel? What which issue do I bring up the most here on the Smart Christians channel, the main channel? I think I, I think it's safe to say issues pertaining to salvation. I think issues, eternal security, one saved, always saved. I think that is easily the biggest idea. And why, Corey, why do you talk about that so much? Because that's what the Bible's about, you goofball. I'm kidding. I'm not, I'm not really calling you a goofball. Yes, I am. I'm not, I don't really mean to call you a goofball. Yes, I do. Uh, that's the, that's what the Bible's about. The Bible's about our salvation and what he did on the cross to make it eternal. That's what it's about. And that's why I'm always happy to have that conversation. You can wake me up at three in the morning. We can have that conversation. And I do talk about other things. I talk about tongues. I haven't talked about demons in a while. Uh, I talk about hermeneutics, certainly. Ask the Calvinists in the chat, what do I say about their her I, Listen, I blast them about their hermeneutics all the time. Tell me what yours is, and they'll give it to me. I said, you just made that up. <laughs> you just made that up now. And stop that, Gregory. Calvinism is, <laughs> it can be false. It can be true. But please, if you disagree with Calvinism, don't don't say it's from the pit of hell. Don't 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 do things like that. Don't say it's another God. Don't don't do things like that, because I think most people that say that don't even understand um, what it means to have another gospel or a false gospel, because all Calvinism is arguing is not how we get, not that we are saved. What makes a person saved is just what were the mechanisms that were taking place in the counsel of God to how we got there. That's it. That doesn't take you away from your salvation or make you any more saved. So I think folks ought to get that in their head, that being a Calvinist or an Arminian and so forth doesn't make you saved or unsaved. Neither are alive from the pit of hell. So guys, stop that. Stop stop saying Calvinism or Tulip is wicked. Stop that. It's someone's thought pattern. And they, it's not like they don't have scriptures to back it up. Now, do I think they're, they might be right or wrong or whatever? Well, th that could be something else. But don't do that. Don't do that. I've never met. I've never met a thoughtful person that came up with that. People that say things like that, when you start breaking down what they believe, like, wow, where'd you get that from? These are folks that if you put them in a classroom and start of ask them, hey, write this down, defend your points, they can't. Or to draw out your logical conclusions. So let's not do that. All we're talking about, not what makes a person say, but how it happens. And to the extent of it, that's all That's all it is as it relates to Calvinism, as it relates to Arminianism or Provisionism, um, how things are drawn out as it relates to dispensationalism, all those things. So let's be clear about some of the things that we don't that we don't put folks in hell over and call it a, a, a damnable heresy because they are not. Amen. Yes, it is. You mean to tell me a doctrinal difference goes as it is rise at the same level as what this man is doing? No, it's not. And you know that, you know, it's not. 
non-Christians aren't joking about Justin Peters. They're joking about folks that are that are slanging demons out of people who just had a bad day. No, Corey, I'm not going to allow you to say that. I'm not going to allow you to say that. I'm not going to allow you to say that because it's not true. It's, and I'm sorry I'm getting passionate and I'm sorry that I accuse you. Listen, you, you can get passionate you in that same category. But the fact is, yeah. so here's what you can do. Name something outright at, at outlandish that a cessationist brother or a dispensational or charismatic. James White is off. He on is what? off on what on some craziness, infant uh, damnation, and all of that other stuff. I don't have, and guess what? I'm not gonna make a video on it. I'm not gonna make a video on it. All I'm saying is, is that the smoke comes always. I'm not gonna say me charismatics. It's not the same on the other end because you're like, well, it's not in the same category. It is still partiality. It Let's be clear. I don't think I'm impartial. I just don't think I'm impartial. Again, you look at the thing. I, I've, I've deleted more or taken down more videos about charismatics and folks in the deliverance ministry than anybody else. But also, James White or anyone like him or Layton Flowers or Justin Peters or Vody, it just does not rise to the same level. Tell me something they've done. By the way, Jay, it's not like James White is running around preaching a whole lot about infant damnation. Now, maybe that's a point that maybe he believes. I don't know, but it's not a big it's not a big issue. At least I don't think. I don't know. I could be I could be wrong. But the point is this though. Even even charismatic, even the folks that are arguing against him aren't as bent out of shape about it. It doesn't No, it's not theater. And so when we look at even what do non-believers look at? What do they what do they bring up? It's it's I promise you it's not that clear and honest by and large the charismatic community when it comes to discussing these things don't want to show up they do you name three or four people in the charismatic community that want to show up to the table and talk about this stuff and so we see this these shenanigans and then they even don't want to come up and defend the shenanigans well then what do we have left but truth be told the bible describes it. so if you're given false prophecies that that legitimately makes you a false prophet when you're when you're casting demons out of folks that wait a second hold on and then we say wait a second can a christian have a demon right and no one wants to show for the argument and then right. sam storm shows up and then he says you know what i'm not even all that all that uh well let me say this sam now, he's gonna he's gonna mention about sam storm but, but before i get there let me just go to some passages because this is what the bible says well first of all and I meant to bring this up earlier in, in regards to dealing with someone who is just kind of just out there and false. Paul says, do not participate in the unfruitful deeds that which is the workings uh, of darkness. People doing things that are just dark. They're just ungodly. But instead, even expose them. Don't take part of them. Don't have these things mentioned among you. But here's a passage that I want all of us to get and to understand. A few passages, as a matter of fact. Let's start at first and first in Titus 1.9. Holding fast the faithful word, which is in accordance with teaching, understand the Bible is the Bible is a big supporter about sound doctrine. I don't know if you know this or not, but the Bible is the Bible is big on the Bible. The Bible the Bible values the words that are in the Bible. The, the Bible is pretty big on sound doctrine. So it says holding the faithful words, which is in accordance with teaching, so that he will be able to do what. If you got these, if you hold fast these words, you can, you're able to do what? To exhort in sound doctrine. And here it is. Someone asked, well, why, did, why, why call these people out? And to refute those who contradict. So we are to, we are supposed to, especially those in, uh, in some sort of leadership or, or ministry, you are supposed to refute those who contradict what? Sound doctrine. Look what he says. For there are many rebellious men empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, especially those of the circumcision, I'm sorry, who, look what he says, who must be silenced. Yeah, the goal is some of these people need to be silenced. Why? Because other people who are still growing, who are still developing, they hear this. Anybody see that? There are these little cute little videos. They're kind of scary, but they're also kind of cute, where the parents are talking to the little kids and saying to them, if a, if, if a stranger comes up and asks you to see their, if they want to show you their puppies, uh, what are you doing? The little kid's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the parent's like, no, no, no. Okay, so what if the stranger comes up and says, I've got some candy. You want some candy? The little kid's like, yes, yes, yes. And the parent's like, no. What if he says, I got some toys in my van? What do you, the little kid's like, yes, okay, yes, thank you. Why? 
Well, the point that I'm making with that is because we've got people who are spiritually just like that, who are susceptible to those sort of things. And how bad is it if the Christians, those who say they love the word, if they won't defend the body, if they won't warn the body? Many of you guys live in a metropolitan area. And like in Dallas, we have what's called the high five. You go up on, on one part of you go up and you go around. You go up and you go around and you're up high. Now, on both sides of this thing, there are guardrails. Why? So that you don't hit that thing and run over it. And you appreciate those guardrails. You don't think about it, but you appreciate it. You know how I know? Because the moment that, that the city of Dallas takes those guardrails off, you are 100 feet in the air, 50 feet in the air, however high in the air, and there are no guardrails. It's a pretty, pretty scary thought. And, I, and, and guess what? There are some marks up against that where someone has actually hit it because it saved them. Our job is to bring people to Christ, relate with people, fellowship, and to be a body to protect. If someone throws a ball at my head, I can do a couple of things. My head can move out of the way. More than likely, I can just use my hand, another part of my body, to block it, to stop it. That's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to protect the body, but also to defend or contradict those or refute those that contradict. That is our job, ladies and gentlemen. Does not represent the deliverance community. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. He doesn't defend says. us. Uh, he's not our spokesman. That's Isaiah's favorite preacher, not mine. Okay. So when we say give us scriptures, I don't, I don't adhere to anything. Okay. I like his line of thinking, second, but he's not my hero. When we say Jesus give us scriptures for those things, when we say give us scriptures, now this point I brought up, I said there are not very many people in the charismatic community that want to come out and have these conversations. And let me just say this. The problem with this video, the problem with this discussion, I enjoyed the discussion, but there's one huge glaring problem with this discussion. One big, one big problem with this discussion. All we talked about was defending a stance, but never about defending doctrine. That's two hours or hour and a half or whatever that we could have covered certain doctrines. That's an hour and a half or so that we could have covered why the scriptures say this is right or this is wrong. We don't have people out there, by and large, that want to come out and say, hey, Corey, you're wrong. Here's why. X, Y, and Z. The people that some of you guys or somebody say in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chat that says, Corey, you're false. Uh, the people that you follow, ma'am or sir, they won't come out and defend themselves. So you cannot expect someone to say, you know what, so and so said such and such. We we are to shut up and not not say, not have a word to say. No, I, I'm I'm curious. You said this can happen to a Christian and that can happen to a Christian, and I don't see that. So therefore, so therefore, my question is this: How then do I know if I'm if I'm mistaken? Here's a person. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I, I called you a lady. I'm sorry. It's, this is a, this is a man, a, a young fellow. Uh, with glasses and look like a hat. Might be a, a wave cap. I'm not sure. Do-rag. I'm not sure. Young fella. African-American man. Afro-American teenage looking uh, young fella. He says, Apostle, wrong, Richard Lorenzo Jr. is a true man of God who is used by God Almighty in a mighty way. Have you heard what he said? Doubtful. You know why? Because what you don't do, what you can't do, I'm presuming, is actually use the scriptures to make your point. Young fellow, you may not know this, but I love you. I'm I'm concerned about you. I have care for you. So much so, reach out to me. We'll cover what you think that he's right about, and I'll cover what you think I'm wrong about, and let's look at the scriptures and let's see how this works. Because we're supposed to do that with each other. You're supposed to love me enough to say, here's why you're wrong, Corey. Here's why. I can say, I can say, Charles, you're wrong. Here's why. Or more to the point, he's wrong. Now, he's wrong. Here's why, and you're wrong for following. Here's also why, and what God is going to do with you. Because I can promise you that let's just say, let's just say you're wrong. Because you don't know Richard Lorenzo. You have no idea. You don't understand. When the man said that you need to be paying tithes in order, and that your salvation and deliverance is at stake, 
because you're not paying tithes. You don't know the implication about that. You couldn't. If you did, you wouldn't make the statement. But if you did, though, and you go up and you and you are deceived and being deceived, deceiving and being deceived, don't think that God is not going to ultimately turn turn his attention towards you because he will. He will. So, brother, send me a, send me a, 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 a not a text, but an email and we can we can talk. We can do what most people who disagree don't do. We can literally have this conversation for those things. And I give a, I give scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. And I want to have conversation. And then those on the demon slayers or anyone else, crickets. If you, Pagani, if you're going to say you're not, if you're not leaning on Sam Storm or uh, nope. Jack Deere or these other guys, nope. whatever, then I, if you're not leaning on that, well, then you, then you owe it to the, to the community, as Peter says, to give a defense. So you right. have to give your scouts. You can't say, you can't say, okay, I'll write a book, but I won't talk about it. That's not defending your scholarship. Right. That's not defending what you're saying. And so what do we I do? To? I did. JP asked me and I had the conversation with him. Uh, JP didn't ask you with all due respect, JP. JP didn't ask him. First of all, yeah, you, you're having a conversation with the charismatic. JP is not, is not coming from the standpoint that I'm coming, coming from and stating what I'm stating. And you don't have to respond to me, nor does anyone else have to respond to me. But it also means that I don't have to acquiesce to what someone else is saying. And so if I'm saying, hey, I don't see this as happening. I don't see this as right. I'll, I'll say there is no such person in the body uh, that has the Holy Spirit in them that had a demon cast out, not one. There's no such teaching in the in the Bible that teaches anyone how to cast a demon out. And we don't see it even happening after um, after every people group in the New Testament has received the Holy Spirit. So after Acts 19, no more casting demons out. It's such a big issue. We don't see that. And so I just want to well, well, explain to me this. Riddle me this. Why, why, why? And then let's look at the scriptures. Let's look at the scriptures. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, the young brother, my young African-American teenage looking brother, male, good brother of mine, Charles, he says the gift of the spirit is still for today. Didn't say it was or wasn't. I will say this, though. If it's the same gifts of the same Holy Spirit, won't the same gifts look like the same gifts in the Bible that was used by the same Holy Spirit then? So if your gifts of the Spirit don't look like those gifts, and I'm doing like that because of my Bible software is over there. Um, so wherever your Bible is, do like that. If the gifts you're speaking of don't look like the gifts over there, then they ain't the gifts of the Spirit. It's just that simple. We've, we've invented tongues today. We've invented a different kind of uh, prophecy where hey, it could be hit or miss. It's vague. We've, in, we've invented a different kind of healing. We've in, in, invented a different kind of worship. If it's not in the scriptures, it is by definition unbiblical. Folks are being slain in the spirit and there's not one example of that happening. And so if you can't give an example and you want me to go by that, well, doggone it, shame on you. You got to grow up. This is where, now this is where the part comes in where this is for this is for Calvinists, this is for Arminian, this is for Provisionists, this is for those that want to replace Israel with the church and so forth. This is for Charismatic Pentecostals, this is for Lutherans, Episcopalian, this is for Catholics who don't realize they shouldn't be Catholics, this is for Eastern Orthodox. If you're not going to defend your scholarship, if you're not going to defend your, uh, the words of the Bible, if you're not going to defend the text, you owe it to the rest of the body and God to be quiet. That's just the fact. We don't need to hear your opinion. We have enough opinions. Go with the scriptures. There's a reason why I'm sitting here putting up these scriptures right here. And if it's the Hebrew or the Greek, or what have you, you'll see it right there. So you've got an opportunity to do what? One, examine the English. Two, look at the Greek. Don't come back to me and say, you don't need the Greek. All you're doing is relying on the Greek. Please be quiet. Please stop being sophomore for just one hour of the day. When you come to this channel, don't no, no sophomore people allowed. No kindergartners allowed. This is for adults. Go, there are plenty of other channels that all, they'll give you what you want to feel. They'll make you feel good. They'll tell you things, but they won't teach anything. For example, let me just deal with my, and I listen, I have come to love my young brother, Charles Franklin. I have come to love my, my young Afro-American um, teenage looking male. He might, he might be 30, but I've come to love him. So I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to do Charles a huge favor. What's the favor I'm going to do? Charles, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to this passage that you're bringing up. I'm going to go to Ephesians 4. That way, because I want you to keep coming back over here. I want you to keep coming back. You said the fivefold ministry is used, uh, is in use. We got apostles, evangelists, teachers, prophets, pastors. Hallelujah. Let's just test that. And, Brother Charles, 
I want to look at the scriptures and let's see if that's correct. Now, you probably hadn't gotten this before. I'm going to go out on a limb. But I want to be like, I want to be like um, the guy in Star Wars and maybe probably take you on as uh, my Padawan learner. Anybody know about Star Wars? Anyway, Ephesians 4.11, look what it says. And you tell me, this is a small thing, but it builds into some, because the, the smallest error becomes a huge heresy. Okay. And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, how many offices did you count? Forgetting the fact of when he gave and if he's still perpetually giving, we won't even address that here. But how many offices, this, this is one of the easiest things that I, that I show charismatics, why they might want to start reading more. How many, well, I, I see five nouns. I, I counted five nouns, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors. I count five nouns. I count five. But just like Sheila said and Stevie said, there's four. How could that be to my to my new potential young Padawan learner? Here's how we can look and see. Well, we go to the right because we also believe in Hebrew and Greek over here because that's how it was given to us. The Lord sovereignly, you know, the Lord that gave us the scriptures. He sovereign through the spirit gave it to us in Greek. He says, Kai altus edokin. So, and he gave himself some now this word right here um where is it tus this is the word the this is the definite article the so now it, it's translated in english as some but it actually is the so here it is tus main apostle so he gave and they're in the same they're in the same um uh declension i'm sorry declension. they're in the same case ending so tus apostolus that's one are you with me tus apostolus that's one De tus or tus de prophetes. That's two. Tus de prophetus or tus prophetes. Pro tus prophetas. That's two. Here's the third one. Tus de. De is post positive, so you shift to the front. I don't want to go into that, but tus euangelistas. Tus euangelistas. That's three. Okay. Definite article with the noun. Here's another one. Tus. Poimenas. Kai didaskalus. Houston, we got a problem. We've got one definite article, one definite article with two nouns. How could that be? And I'm specifically asking my, 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 my good young friend, who I love, I love you, I love you to death, uh, Charles. How could it possibly be that these two words right here, pastor and teacher, or Pomenos, which is shepherd, Poimenos, and Didaskalos, which is teachers, how come there's only one definite article? Just two, right there, two. Poimenos, Didaskalos. Why? Because they're the same. Pastor, teacher is the same. It's, the, it's describing the same office. Well, of course, not a big deal. Four versus five, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Because if you can miss that little bitty thing, that insignificant thing, what else are you missing? And so we are believing the whole Bible. Don't you think the Greek counts or do you, or so if, if, cause if you're going to say, believe the whole Bible, but don't believe what I just read, you're not believing the whole Bible. This is where you have to grow. And young man, let me just be clear with you. This is where you and other people who disagree have to grow up and, and deal with the text. It's what it says. It was given for a reason. He didn't give it to us because some, some young kid or some young person or somebody or some old man or old woman in America said, you know, I don't, I'm not feeling that. Okay. All right. You can deny the scriptures if you want to. So now going back to what we're doing, you have to you have to pull this stuff out. Why? Because somebody is in danger. Now, after you pull it out, after you refute these people, after you silence these people, after you after you rebuke them, there's going to come a time where you want to extend love to them without question. I want I want you to come and learn the scriptures or teach me. Doesn't matter. But we'll be going through the scriptures together. When do you determine, how do you determine if something, because you don't know the person, mm. how do you determine if something is, because if you do, I'm, I'm assuming if you do determine that something is demonic, you let folks know, right? Yeah. Okay. So what causes you to determine if something is demonic? What I do is like, I will binge watch people like crazy. Now, this is, this is a bed go. This is, this is. Um, I don't know, Betty. Go. You still in the, in the chats? I need to know if you are. If you play, what were you? Small fort, power fort, 
you look like you was probably a power forward, not a small. I don't know that you could probably shoot that well, shoot a three that well. I'm just, I'm going to go out on a limb. You don't look like you got a jumper. You might, though. I'm just, I mess with you. But no, what he's doing is he's saying, how does he determine who is a, a false prophet or false teacher, what have you, right? And so now he takes time and, and goes through as much of their material as possible. And I've seen a few of his videos, and that makes sense now. That makes sense now because he seems to be pretty thorough. That makes sense. I'm not going through a ton of what you're going through. I'll go at it as it comes. Most of it I cover. Somebody sent it to me, and I'm looking at this. Okay, let me let me look at another clip. If it's a long, if it's part of a sermon, I might take time and actually look at the sermon. And so that's what that's what Abednego is speaking about right now. I will. You can say I have no life, but that's something I do. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> what, something okay, I do, but, and but I love saying, it. But, but what criteria? They are. Because I don't, I don't, I, I don't know, and we're not speaking the about criteria, the criteria. The criteria. What, what's what's the criteria? What causes someone? Yeah. Or something to be demonic. I would say if someone teaches blatant witchcraft, like the third eye, astral projection, saying that they can hear what you're saying when you're over there in Europe, or their soul leaves their body, or they say, you know, sex before marriage is not a sin, or they teach um, you got to sow a thousand dollars in order to get this blessing from God, stuff like that, that is actually doctrines of demons that cannot be found within the scriptures at all. Now, someone's saying someone has. Now you see where he's going with it, right? He he he's he's kind of talking about the the result of some of these bad things, but he's making his way back. And that's one of the things that that at first I actually didn't know he was he was charismatic. At first I didn't. Uh, there's I, there there's a lot that I do like about Abednego. There there really is. And so you know, let me just let me just connect with this guy. But but notice where he's going with this. And then I think his definition and then or his criteria as well as Pagani's ends up coming back to me has a demon isn't going to lead them to hell it's not going to lead them away from christ i think that's just a conversation we can have doctrinally but it's not going to ruin someone's salvation and it doesn't make them less or more of a christian would you say i, I, I believe primarily the basis by which we determine someone is false are the scriptures yep. and the ad, whether they adhere to the scriptures faithfully um, in all forms, you know, and if there's a consistent willful violation of the things that they teach, because um, I, I believe what Abednego is saying is more the things that they practice. That's yes. like the things that they practice, you know, but if a person is uh, willfully violating the scriptures, then I, I would say it would be safe this is why I, I'm totally I'm I'm with Corey. I'm like I got you, man. Like I'm 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 I'm, I'm like yes, you know, because you know some of the videos you did on Jamal Bryant and others. I'm like yes, like yes, amen. Okay, you know, so what makes it willful? You know, willful would mean that if someone who has the authentic truth of that verse is trying to correct them on that, and they willfully violate that consistently after being corrected by brethren saying that's not what that means we need to have a okay did you catch that did you catch that <laughs> so a person that is one they get they have this pattern of constantly doing something their doctrine is off they will not take correction and what they do also shows up not just in what they think but also in what they do so check, 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 check. One with this guy, Richard Lorenzo, but two, all these other people. And the problem is, at some point in time, you have to be willing to pull the trigger and say, yeah, that is false. That's wrong, no matter who it is. Doesn't mean that you can't come back and have a conversation with them anymore. Doesn't mean that they can't, that you can't be open and ready um, for them if they want to, you know what, I was wrong, or if they want to listen. Case in point, um, <laughs> who I need to call Marcus Rogers or other people case in point, because it's one thing to disagree with something. The second, it's another thing quite the opposite or quite even more so that you've got scriptures to show. We are literally called ladies and gentlemen, this is, we should, we should, as my young brother said, we should, we should listen to all the scripture. Well, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, what does he say? Preach the word. Preach the word. Let's put that on a t-shirt. Be ready in season and out of season. That means all the time. Reprove. Rebuke. There's another word. So, so far we've covered contend, undermine, expose, refute, silence. Uh, he's going to speak about fighting later. So fight and rebuke. All of those things are things that, he's, that, that we're being told to do. Rebuke, exhort. How so? 
with great patience, meaning all the time or long suffering. And he says to do so with instruction. So do it with the scriptures for the time will come when young pups who talk about the fivefold ministry and they're not, there's not a fivefold ministry. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll have itching ears and want to have for their, their, their ears tickled. They'll accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with that. And so we have to do so. Is it, are, are we going to win? Are we going to actually convince all of those people who are listening to unsound doctrine to come around? No, we're not. No, we're not. That's just the, that's the truth of the matter. And I used to wonder, I used to wonder why do we have, why is the Lord even allowing so many false teachers to deceive people? And then how come we don't have so many people who are actual true believers who are still listening to some of this stuff? And it kind of, it kind of, um, it kind of makes sense uh, as we thought about, thought about this and, and kind of worked this out. There are some people who need someone who's a little further along the line than they are. Here's what I mean. Let's say you talk to someone you're trying to win someone who's, I don't know, from a bad part of town, a bad neighborhood. And there's somebody who's from that bad hood who's not really in that bad hood, but kind of understands the lingo a little bit and still has some tendencies. Well, that person might be able to still reach back and pull that person better than someone, let's say, who's from a, a farm or someone who's from, I don't know, Wall Street to pull that 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 kid out of the hood out. Right. And so it got got us to thinking one day, well, you know what? When you start hearing the gospel, the people that are preaching to folks that are in this kind of movement are typically the kind of people who uh, used to be in that they might still have some lingering uh, acceptance of it and so forth. So, so in other words, God is using people, good or bad. Um, God is using people who have good doctrine or bad doctrine. He, he, it's just how awesome he is. He's using all of these people as tools to bring more and more people to the kingdom. Now, I wish if it were me. Here's a stupid statement. You won't hear a dumber statement all day long, all year, year long. You ready for this absolutely stupid statement I'm getting ready to make? <clears throat> if I were God, there it is. If I were God, I wouldn't do it that way. How many of y'all said that, something like that? If I were God, well, we're not. Thank God. But I would eliminate all bad doctrine, all bad teaching. Matter of fact, I would get rid of sin. But then again, if I got rid of sin, I would have to get rid of all of us. <laughs> right. So we are to do this now. Notice what Paul is saying. And this is what, by the way, this is where <laughs> this is where Alexander Pagani got upset. And by the way, I told him, I said, I, I didn't do this on purpose, but we were doing the video. Some of you all remember. I just got kind of caught up and it made sense. You'll see. Uh, he speaks about those folks that have that have left him. And by the way, before we get there, he says that I have fought the good fight. He says, uh, verse six. For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. Paul knows I'm getting ready to die. My head's about to leave my body. I have fought the good fight. How many of you are interested in fighting? I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Notice what he says. This is why this issue of doctrine is important, ladies and gentlemen. What does it say? I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Uh, Tateleka, tain. Pistine, I'm sorry, wrong word, wrong, well, I'm in the wrong sentence. Uh, tain pistine tetereka, tetereka, which is the faith I have kept. But notice what he's talking about, not, not having faith, but the faith, the faith, the faith. I have kept the faith, the tenets of the faith. Not having faith, but the faith. So that's what Paul is talking about. I have kept, because every time that we see in the Bible someone moving away from what looks like salvation, it always describes them as moving away from the knowledge or the faith, the tenets of the faith, the belief. And so he says, in the future, there is later for me a crown of righteousness. So Paul knows I'm getting, I'm getting ready to be killed. And so what is Paul doing? At Paul's death, notice what one of the last things that Paul does. At the end of his life, Paul is saying, um, Alexander the coppersmith did me harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Be on guard or beware of Alexander. Uh, uh, be on guard against him for yourself, for he vigorously opposed our what? Our teaching. 
So it's the teaching, it's the doctrine, the instructions, the tenets of the faith that matter. Now, when I when we did that, I wasn't I, I wasn't even thinking. I didn't even think about it initially. Talk about <laughs> beware of Alexander. So I told us, you know what, Pagani. I, I actually I was just just playing. I didn't even realize that until you know you get to go and say, oh, it says beware of Ale Alexander. And so we just ran with it. But the point is, for anyone, our issue is the teaching, the doctrine. Let me give you an example. So someone wants to say something like this, Corey, you really need to be in prayer, which is to assume I'm not in prayer, okay, uh, and fasting, because you'll because you definitely you're definitely off about Richard. What and and, and young uh, uh, sweetheart, here's a, here's a question, here's a point, here's the issue. You guys keep defending Richard Lorenzo. But where are your scriptures? Where is your scriptures to say that what he's doing is right? Where are your scriptures to say, Corey, you're wrong? Here's what this is. Here's what that is. I'm sorry. And you can say that this is an arrogant stance. It's not. It's just truth. You want to know the reason why most people in the charismatic community don't want to have a conversation? Can I tell you the reason why? Because they don't have the scriptural backing. Because when we start talking about certain things, certain issues, if we start going through the text, this is what this word means. This is how this is taken. This is, remember I said, we don't want to necessarily learn or memorize the scriptures. We want to memorize the story. They don't even understand what's happening in the story. That's the biggest problem. That's the part that, that bothers us the most is when we see people who are making these statements but will not defend the text, then pardon me for not really having a whole lot of concern about what you say because if you're not going to deal with the text, then what good are you? What good are you even to anyone else? All you can do is offer an opinion. Well, what happens if, if the day turns? It goes from being Tuesday to Wednesday or Thursday and your mood changes. So now all you're doing is giving an opinion that is just either didn't have the same attitude or it's not as forceful because it's your opinion. But the scriptures stay the same. So whatever I say in in from that Paul says in, in first or second Timothy or what John says or what Jesus says or whomever says, whether I said on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's the same thing, the same force. How do I know? Because there's power in that. When you come telling me that a Christian can have a demon and you come telling me that all these Christians have the power by the Holy Spirit, that just, listen, that is a, a big problem because the Holy Spirit is so powerful that he can work in you and you can do all the things that Jesus did and even more so greater stuff which that's not what it's saying, but you can do greater things, better things, more things than Jesus because you have the Holy Spirit in you. But the one thing you can't do is not is, 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 is keep yourself from believing. The one thing the Holy Spirit can't do is keep you from believing. The other thing the Holy Spirit can't do is keep demons out of you, even though he says greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. No, 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 those scriptures don't matter. I'm so powerful with the Holy Spirit. I'm so indwelt with the Holy Spirit. I'm so anointed. I'm too anointed for this shirt. I'm too, I'm too anointed for my cat. Yeah, all that. I, I'm, I'm just covered. I'm drenched in the Holy Spirit. So much so, don't touch the Lord's anointed. Don't, don't even say a word against me because I'm anointed. But I can lose my salvation. Holy Spirit strong in me, but I can lose my salvation. Holy Spirit strong in me. But I can, but a demon can come in and uproot the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is strong in me, except when it matters, except when it matters. And I go back and look for the scriptures and ask for someone to give me the scriptures. And I get what? Crickets, nothing. Nobody can say any word. And that's a problem. And if you're not willing to have the conversation, then don't get bothered when folks don't care about your fact that you got to have a conversation and keep saying to other people, because I need to know if I'm right or wrong. And if you don't believe them, if you don't, if you don't care enough about your doctrine, your teaching to prove it, we got a problem. Because what does first Peter, uh, uh, first Peter 3.15 says, sanctify Christ in your heart and always be ready to give an answer to the hope that's in you from anyone that asks. And I've said it to Lily. It doesn't have to be public. Right. We can have this conversation because when folks say, hey, it, it's, it's Pagani a brother. What if I say, I, I have no idea. I'll treat you like one because I want to talk to you now. Same thing with, any, with anyone else. And so I need to know what you believe, because I could be wrong. I could I could be wrong, but I'm not going to believe yeah. I'm wrong if you won't talk to me or show me. Sorry, I don't think that's why you ask. I think you believe you're genuinely right, and you just want to have the conversation. 
I've because nobody's ever seen you very rarely say, you know, I was wrong in that. And even and you backpedal, you backpedal when you say it. So I don't think you genuinely want to have that conversation. I just think you want to be heard. And so his point was, you, you just want to, you just, I guess for lack of a better way of putting it, you just want to talk. You just want to be heard. No, I don't. I, I, I listen. I could care less. I could care less. Um, I am not promoting myself in that regard. But if you, again, if you talk to me, I can say I've got a few minutes and then we get to talk and we're on scriptures here and there and so forth, because that's just my heart. My heart, my passion is, is are the words of this book and teaching. That's really it. And so, no, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have to disagree. I really am. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but you got to talk to me. Tell me. And so Pagani and, 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 and Marcus Rogers and Sal Devar and whoever else you owe it to the body. If you got something that you feel like is from the Lord, Shame on you for not telling people why for defend yourself. Shame on you if if what you have is from the Spirit, is from the Lord, and you don't defend it. Well, then one, you're you're violating First Peter three. Two, you are letting us down. I need to know if, if I don't believe in, in general case, generational curses, but right. you believe so. You've written a book about it. Well, then yeah. tell me, might maybe I've got one. Right? How I break it. That's my point. If if what you say is strong so much so that you're willing to type it out, this isn't for the folks that have a channel or pastoring, but for the folks in the chats or other places, you're willing to type it out, but you're not willing to go through your scriptures. You're not willing to fight this out. You write a book, but you don't want to defend it. You preach, but you don't want to defend it. That's not what we see. We are supposed to be ready to give a defense. Now, the problem is we could have, instead of having two hours to talk about if I use the right or wrong words in describing someone who I know is, is just unbiblical. We could have, we could have used that time to cover or defend our doctrine. Well, what about this? We could have just chose one aspect, one something, and made some, you know, now I'm grateful for the conversation, but ultimately we didn't really make a whole lot of headway because we still left, hey, all right, good conversation, but didn't get a chance to sell it. So that same energy, I want to take that same energy and just run through the Bible. Let's see what this says. Let's see what that says. And now he made a point that people in the in the reform community and people in the uh, Calvinists that can be a little bit arrogant and so forth. And, that, and that's true. That's true. But then again, but then again, also, I thought about it, though. But there are enough arrogant people in all the camps. But let's just say, let's just say it's true. Let's just say, I'm not saying it is, but let's just say it's true that a lot of Calvinists uh, or Reformed people are arrogant. They are more, they are more book knowledge than they are Holy Spirit. Folks have said that about, now I'm not a Calvinist or Reformed, but folks said, hey, Corey, you, you rely too much on the word of God. Can I just say something? If you ever say that a person relies too much on the Bible than the Holy Spirit, can I take, I just, I don't, I just want to just say in a loving way, some loving rebuke, how stupid that is. That is, that is as ignorant as it can get. You're relying too much on the word of God. The very word that the Holy Spirit gave, I'm relying on the Holy Spirit, but Corey, you're just relying on the Bible that was given to us by the Holy Spirit. Really? So all these things about um, being able to rightly divide the word and, and make in the Bible doing its very best to let us know that these words were inspired. God breathed, move the Holy Spirit moved upon men to write, to bring this revelation you saying don't rely on it. So even Jesus, who is quoting Old Testament scriptures, same thing with Peter and, and, and John and Paul. No, no, rely on the spirit. You wouldn't even know what the spirit is if we don't have the holy, if we don't have the words that were given to us by the Holy Spirit. This is why you've got to, and anyone that says that, anyone, let me just say this right here. These are these are towards nameless, faithless people. Anyone that would say that to you disregard that person. That person is not very mature. That person is still drinking milk, biblically speaking. He he gave us his word. He preserved his word. Think about it. He preserved his word. We have these arguments, these issues about King James, New King James, ESV, NASV, Net Bible, all these things. We've got NIV. He preserved his word even in those different translations but don't rely on it. No, no, we're, we're not going to do that. We're not, I disagree. I disagree. So, 
he gave us this for a reason. Now, he, he does give us a guide. And I'll be honest, there might be times, I'm pretty sure there have been, where I have violated this and I want to be careful about it. You want to be careful not to really go too. There are times where you want to be careful not to go too far in your assessment. But then there are also times where you want to, where you want to make sure you go far enough. And it's a, it's a balance. You can either roar like a lion or you can speak like a lamb. Am I trying to grow a beard? No, I'm not trying to grow a beard. It's just there. I'm, I'm shaving it. I just saw that. Yeah, I'm shaving this thing. It's bothering me. How many of you all said, how many of you have said the wrong thing or said the right thing at the wrong time or vice versa? You just, I could have said that better. I was too harsh. Or you left feeling, yeah, I wasn't harsh enough. And we've all done that. We've all been there. And so it's difficult. So I would say if your head is in the right place and your heart is in the right place, you'll make mistakes. You'll come back around and try it differently, make some more mistakes. But look what it says. This is Paul in 1 Corinthians 4 or 5. This is one of our favorite passages are in this set of scriptures. He says, I'm sorry, wrong verse. It says, uh, verse 5, there it is. Therefore, do not go on passing judgment before the time. In other words, I'm not going to condemn you, uh, but wait until the Lord comes, uh, who will both bring to light the things hidden in the darkness and disclose the motives of men's heart. And then each man's praises will come from, come to him from God. Does that mean you should never, ever call things? No, that's not what he's saying. I'm not condemning a person to death. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And I'll always hold out hope that a person can come back. Uh, if a person's overtaking the sin, as Galatians says, you who are spiritual restore such a one. But look what he says. Here's our, one of our favorite passages. First Corinthians four, six. Now, these things, brethren, I have figuratively applied to myself and Apollos for your sake. Why? Look what he says. So that in us, you may learn not to exceed what is written. Stop going beyond the bounds of scripture, not to exceed what is written so that no one of you uh, will become arrogant in behalf of, of or I'm sorry, in behalf of one against the other. In other words, Hold to what the scriptures say. Don't exceed what it says. We're not going to use it to condemn someone. We will use it to be judgmental in the right way, not in the wrong way. And the right way necessarily means that we have to hold out hope that what we're doing is going to ultimately bring somebody back. That's what we want to do. So thank you, by the way. I see that. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I saw, I saw, um, my, my buddy and, you, and, and he sent, he sent me $5. He sent me $5. Doggone it. Doggone it. God is good. Listen, we were, we were, we were in a place, um, that we didn't want to be. He was, he joined me in part of my federal tour. Yeah. Good, good brother. He'll tell you, listen, if we, we can be sitting there working out, and in the middle of the workout, ask me a question about the Bible. We're going to stop and talk about the Bible. We're going to stop and talk about the Bible. Faith uh, Jarman, thank you so much for the super chat as well. But that's the goal. So let me just say this in closing. Let me just summarize this thing. Let me just summarize this thing. Be bold with the scriptures. Be bold with the scriptures. Have love in your boldness so that the people who aren't getting it, as Paul says, Rebuke, exhort, exhort. That's encouraging. That's that's you're gonna keep doing it with all long suffering. That's over and over again with great patience and with teaching. That's where the being bold with the scriptures comes comes back into play. Be bold with the scriptures. And so when the opportunity ever presents itself, because the interesting thing is that do you know how many people in the way I've done things have actually reached out to me? Most of it has been privately. It's not, it's not you know, on, on camera. Cause I don't, I promise you, I promise you, I'm not all that interested. I don't have a problem with it doing it on camera, but it's not my goal to actually speak about something or somebody where they're wrong on camera. Except for tomorrow. Except for tomorrow. If my voice is okay, cause I'm, I'm coming down with the, I think the flu, my grandson coughed on me the night that he spent the night, just coughed in my face, the rude little something. So I've got a little bit of something. I am right now. I've got this right here. I am chugging this down. I'm um, 
I've got Theraflu and DayQuil and everything else in me. I'm struggling. Touch touch your phone, touch your computer, and reach out, stretch out, and, <laughs> and pray my healing in the Lord. I'm struggling. It's it's rough. And I'm about to go in here and sit on my laptop and, and do some, some seminary homework. But this is how much I love the Lord. I love his word. And let me just say this. You are some kind of sorry Christian. Let me say this again. You are some kind of sorry Christian. You might still be a Christian, but not a good one. If you do not value the word and you don't think it's a bad thing, you don't think it's a bad thing when someone else mangles, mishandles the word and harms another person in the body with their improper use of the word. Shame on you if you do not value what he's given us. That is his word. Amen.